Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Toad House. Uh, I am not your usual face that you see on this channel, but I am glad to see you all. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for stopping in. It is great to see you. Uh, I am guesting today for our lovely, lovely fearless leader, Alana. Um, and I have prepared my hydration and we're gonna work today a little bit with how to design environments and characters and possibly UI if we have time for visual novels. So, so just kind of the, the general, like what sort of things you'll need and how to make them. It is very disconcerting to see myself and I wish I could I only see chat here. That would be nice. Um, we are working on the game jam. Uh, if you join the Toad House Discord, I believe the link is below, or I believe they have exclamation point Discord in chat. Um, that is how you get more information. Is the music slightly too loud? Okay, we can fix that. No problem. All right, music can go down just a bit. I usually only have the music for my own mental state to keep me awake. <laughs> But hello, I am Thunderbird Paints. I am the lead artist and art director for Toad House Games, working on Call Me Sarah, um, working on Roll for Confidence, and recently worked on the um, previously released Good Looking Home Cooking. Um, so we have in chat, uh, if you have any extra questions about the, the jam or anything else that's going on, it looks like we have Maya in chat today. Everybody say hello to Maya. Hello, Maya. Uh, it does have a pop out function. Hmm. Hmm, yes, Maya is the uh, community manager and she's wonderful. So if you ever have any questions about the Toad House, hit her up. All right, primarily we're gonna be working in Photoshop today. Photoshop is, um, Photoshop is like hit or miss for um, whether or not it wants to behave for me recently. I am working with some new programs as well. Um, we'll, 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 we'll kind of like try to convince it to behave. We're, we're gonna try to like will into existence Photoshop behaving. So if you guys want to send good vibes to Photoshop, you know, just try to give it a little bit of a pep talk. We're, we're going to make it work today. Um, good vibes. Send all them good vibes. So let's start out with... Let's start out with characters, right? Um, the meat and bones of a visual novel, right? Um, the first thing that you want to have is an idea of what your plot is going to be, right? Um, <laughs> Photoshop, oh Photoshop, become Clip Studio Paint. I, you know, one of these days I'll have to give it a try. I just got Affinity Photo. Um, that's the one I'm going to be trying to swing over. I can import all of my brushes. I wish I could have Procreate, but Procreate is Mac only, and I am not a Mac user anymore. I was in college. I'm done with that. Krita is good. Um, I'm learning Krita for animation specifically. Um, I just like the brush selection that I can get. Um, but generally speaking, uh, when creating characters, yeah, Krita is very good. Um, the first thing that you kind of want to do with visual novel, let's let's start out with the overarching themes. Let's make a fake visual novel today. Let's let's make the basic ideas for the framework of a visual visual novel. I can talk. So let's give some overarching themes, right? Do we want this to be futuristic? Do we want this to be um, modern? Do we want this to be a renaissance visual novel? Like, do we want to do like a Ren Faire visual novel? Because 
that would be hilarious. Cowboy Western visual novel. Okay, we've got a cowboy Western visual novel in chat. Ren Fair, Ren Fair. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like we want to kind of do a. Um, either way, we kind of we're, we're kind of feeling that retro vibe visual novel. Hello, Tissid. Welcome in. Um, by the way, um, I'd rather <laughs> remind it for that what it costs. It ought to work like a charm, seriously. Um, and I hope everybody enjoys the stream today. So let's see here. Let's go with something. So we've got the ideas of Ren Fair. We got the ideas of Ren Fallout, <laughs> Retro Fallout World. Actually, let's not do it on that layer. Don't do that on that layer. The first thing to learn is an artist. You will put things on the wrong layer and then you will cry about it a little. <laughs> So we've got Ren Fair with an E. Um, how long is this going to stream going to be ish? Um, I was thinking somewhere between two hours and like three ish hours. Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking two two and a half is my goal. So we're gonna be going over the basics. Um, so shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. Two hours should be plenty to go over everything. The, the Ren Pie Ren Fair. Oh no. Oh no. I hope you do get some good sleep, Paper Cut Doctor. Sleep is important. You have to take care of yourself. Um, let's see here. Um, some kind of retro uh, cowboy western. Okay, so you know what? We can do this, right? We can add those cowboy themes to a Ren Farish thing. Let's just do a D and D themed. This is my this is my jam, guys. Let's do a Dungeons and Dragon themed visual novel today. Nano Ren Fair. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Instead of NaNoWriMo, it's not a Ren Fair. I would be here for that, honestly. I spy an art doer. I you do. Hi, Toads. Oh, thank you for the follow to Team Toad House King. Um, it is a very cozy Hi, place Toads. here. Hi, uh, And thank you for the follow to Team Toad House Emilenia. I'm glad you guys joined the Toad House. And that voice that you hear popping up um, is... The one, the only, Alana, um, the founder of Team Toad House. All right, so we are going to focus on our themes. So now that we have our, our overarching themes, we're going to say all of this can be contained into fantasy TTRPG style characters. You did get confused the first time you heard Alana talk at a stream she wasn't in. Yeah, yeah. I do appreciate that um, all of her sound clips are that. Um, okay, so we can get that cowboy aesthetic. Um, you got confused too. It's like, wait, is Alana here? Is she like in my, am I on a call with her? What's going on? <laughs> You cannot curse things here. There are no curses in the Toad House. That, that is saved for my channel. Okay, so now that we know this, let's focus on the main character. Now, the main character in a lot of visual novels is pretty static, but it can be adaptable. So do we want our we can we can focus on our main character being something that's adaptable that we can just have like a character generator for, which I think is perfectly fine. Actually, honestly, that's kind of the way that a lot of things are going these days. And I, I like that. Or we can have a very specific main character. Who main? Specific. All right. So who, what, what sort of character do we want to be our main character? All right. We want a specific main character. 
let's get some details down then. Once we know our details, then it'll be pretty easy to start to design this main character. Because that is the character that you want to design first because it's going to be the core of your game, right? You may not see them frequently, um, but you will see them in special scenes and you want to see how they'd uh, look and interact with other characters in these special scenes. Now these special scenes, um, CGs or, or however you want to call them, uh, they're unlockable scenes usually found after a certain set of criteria are met in visual novels. I have so many Toad House points. Toadkins. I need to not pay attention to the Toadkins. Um, so do we want to have like a bard can be where you start to get the cowboy western. Okay, all right, all right. I like the idea of a bard. Okay, let's do a bard. A Texas accent. We're gonna do a Texas accent bard. Um, they're gonna be. Um... <sighs> Non-bardary instead of bar non-binary, non-bardary. Start of campaign forward. All right, so we're gonna have a non-binary bard character. Any particular races or character types? Um, do we want to start with the standard human? I did think of a Ford immediately. Yes. Do you guys want to have half orc? We can have a half orc. We don't see a lot of half-orc main characters, so, like, half-orcs are pretty awesome. Now, Ford wasn't a, uh, that could be interesting. All right, all right. All right. Well, okay, let's start with that. Half-orc, half-elf. We could do that. Um... You just made a half-orc for your new campaign or your favorite? Out of curiosity, how do you apply the discussion of character design reg regarding CGs interacting with other characters uh, well aesthetically and like with character builders? So with that, um, with character builders, um, it's more trying to figure out scenes where a character... It's making them fit into that, right? It's it's kind of like, at that point, you have to understand that there's going to be a certain level where you need to make sure certain aspects of the aesthetic, like the sizes of the hands or the size of that the character takes up in the space or what have you, um, are consistent. So your character builder aspects need, you know, they can be more... color and shapes and I think Arcade Spirits did it really well with um, basically just recolors. Um, who said, exactly, who says the other half needs to be human? All right. Uh, are we gonna cast Eldritch Blast? No, we're a bard. We can't cast Eldritch Blast. Um, but as far as when you have the builder, there's really no... The default character, you can set a default character with the builder. Um, however, you can understand that someone just might not jive aesthetically. Like, they might be bright neon green and have uh, bright neon purple hair against a background that doesn't really fit that if you have a character builder. And that's, that's a very difficult thing to... It's kind of like playing Skyrim where your sliders get really wonky. But first, let's start off with the basics, right? The basics of drawing a character. Um, usually for most of my character illustrations, I do turnarounds. Um, so you have the basic body of a character. So we just need to figure out what the frame of this character is going to be how big they're going to be. Um, would you almost want to go backwards then? Make the character creator last so you can match it with the rest of the art. Um, yes, and in, in that case, yes. Um, 
Because if it's character creator, then the character itself doesn't really much matter as much as the story does. I love it when games are written for... Um, games and movies are written for ambiguous characters. You can be anyone, you can say anything, you can take multiple courses of dialogue. In the case of, say, this style, where you create the character first, you're creating the dialogue based on um, the character's history, so you're creating a character that has this history. Where necessar you're not necessarily doing that with something that is a true character builder. Oh, you're good. You're good. So I always start too big because I have very little screen space on this uh, tablet. I only have a 13 inch tablet, um, which still better than what I had before. Um, what's a Western instrument? A banjo? I mean, a banjo, a guitar. I do like the idea of the, the guitar. Um, With characters that are pre-created too, uh, the other thing that we that you keep in mind is uh, not just their um, not just their basic aesthetic, but also the potential for um, cosplay. Now, you can do a bunch of different methods of creating characters. For me, I tend to draw my characters looking relatively... Um, I know this is rather speciesist in the land of uh, Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy realms and sci-fi, but I, I tend to start them off with your standard um, recognizable, um, pretty generic humanoid shape. Um, but you can create characters that have that are based on like certain like colors, certain um, shapes. Like you can have somebody that's very angular and have somebody very um, roundish. You know, like you can take shapes and base characters around that. Um, as far as uh, designing a character that you want to look more humanoid. Uh, a lot of things that you can take into consideration are cosplayability, um, because you want people to really jive with your character design, right? Uh, definitely needs a hat. Absolutely needs a hat. Waterbot says, hydrate. Well, I've got you. I can definitely do that. Hydrate. I packed the big one for today. <laughs> I knew there was going to be plenty of hydration here on the Toad House channel. We do also do um, a five minute break in the middle of stream. Chat is working here. Yes, I think I just needed to refresh the uh, the source by changing off the, stream, the screen. So it seems to be working, which is great. So you guys can see me gesturing wildly now while drawing, which is always a good time. Who does not enjoy watching me gesturing wildly? Whoop. And back to this stream. Um, I really should put a, um, for the next time I do this, I should put a, um, that arm is way too long. There we go. I should put a, Transition. Transition's the word I'm looking for um, between my uh, scenes. Scenes. Hello, Jeffrey Lindsay. You are not, in fact, late. In fact, you are just in time for me to hit this button right here. We're going to save this. I'm going to save this, I don't know, in a different folder. We're just going to throw it into Thunderbird Paints in general for the moment. Um...
So we are creating a non-binary half orc. Now I wanna give, I'm a big fan of shoulders, right? Um, so I wanna give this character some decent shoulder ridge. So we're gonna start working on the shape of this character now, right? And then we'll start getting into the, the meat and bones of it. Now there are a couple of ways you can do coloring for your character designs for like concepts and whatnot. Um, you can do your line work and then fill it in. I am not so much a line work person. I am sometimes, but um, you don't have to do that if that is not your style. You also don't have to do it the way that I do it. I just have a very, the way that I tend to draw is very, uh, actually let's do the, let's do the turnaround pose and then we'll start to, once we get the basic, we'll sketch out some faces too. Actually, let me put this on a different layer. There we go. That way, if I mess up, I can just do something about that layer. So we'll figure out what the back looks like of this character. So we want to make sure that like we have certain things, like the shoulders are going to line up, the top of the head lines up, the waist lines up, the knees, and the toes. We're going we're gonna to sing that old song, the head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes, you know that. And basically, at this point, it is just figuring out the, the basic shape of the character. After that, it becomes, um, I need to get the waist. I didn't get the waist. Here we go. Let's gotta get that. Gotta get that rear. All right, the back of the neck. So this is, you know, you gotta figure out where the spine is in relation to everything else. Um, backs of the knees. Guides, I know, I use guides for character design all the time. I also use guides for, um, for the um, environment stuff too. Yeah, it's good to have the height lines. Um, I also do that for um, when I do the big character drawing. So sometimes what I'll do is at the beginning, once we have a character list, once narrative comes through and says, hi, I have all of these characters, I'll take and I'll sketch out basic sketches that are really not much more detailed than what you'll see in a minute. And I'll line them all up together so we get height, height guides and we get um, an idea of... Uh, an idea of what sort of um, shapes and body types that we have. Because I like to have a variance of body types and a variance of um, you know, things. I like to have a variance of body types. I like to have a variance of heights. Um, and I like to have a variance of recognizable shapes. So if you were to look at a silhouette of that character and, you know, do the who's your po who's that Pokemon thing. Um, all right. Well, thank you for stopping in, Emilenia. It was good to see ya. It was good to see ya. See you again soon. I love drawing shoulder blades. I don't know why, don't ask me. All right, we are doing a half orc, so we're gonna start off with, actually before I go into this, let's go in and uh, give us a bit of, whoop, not that far. Let's 
Let's do a little bit of identification of, um, we'll lighten these two up now that we have the basic sketch down for the shape and we'll get some, some features sketched in, right? So this will be, put this one above here. What kind of hair do we want our main character to have? We're going to start with the orc nose. A nice strong a nice clean swoosh okay all right like a this is where I start to get those like smaller details into um, so, so your smaller details, like figuring out the proportions on the face, what style the eyes are, we'll do a nice clean swoosh, like a, like a swoosh. I mean, they are a bard. Don't forget to drink some water. Waterbot says so. And Waterbot is all knowing. Waterbot will know if you don't drink water. Waterbot will tell your parents you're not drinking enough water. Waterbot will absolutely tell your parents you're not drinking enough water. Uh, Waterbot is okay with tea. Just as long as you also drink water. Now, if you were only drinking coffee, Waterbot might take offense. In fact, tea sounds really good. Now, bards aren't exactly known to be the most. Actually, if we have a if we have a hat, because we have to have the cowboy hat, right? So let me look up a cowboy hat. Now, here's the other thing: always use reference. Some time for Tissid's tea service. What? That's uh, that's just chat. Chat just and chat just is saying it's time for Tissid's tea service. All right, so we've got a cowboy hat on our bird. So actually it's going to actually affect what we do for the hair, unless we do a separate layer with the hat. So we'll have like a hat and a no hat version, which we can do. Or we can just have default, this character always wears their hat. They, we can make a joke about it in the visual novel. I think this is good. I think this is good. Now, by the way, I understand that a lot of you are doing the uh, the Toad House Jam. So if you are doing the Toad House Jam and you want to uh, borrow the idea of a cowboy bard, um, a half-orc cowboy bard, which I gotta get them, them fangs in there.
we here at, over at Thunderbird Paints think that sharing is caring. And in, in, in this sort of instance, I'm probably not the first one who's thought of a cowboy bard. And I won't be the last. Teethies. Exactly. Gotta get them teethies. Alright, this is where we start to define a little bit more of this character. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this hat come down more. There we go. Alright, since they're gonna go with that cowboy theme, I want them to have a vest. Alright, they are going to have the best vest that has ever vested in the history of vests. I am also partial to vests. If anyone has met me... Ah. If anyone has met me... Uh, if anybody has ever caught any of my other streams, you understand that vests are kind of a thing that I am, I am really into as, as a theory. It must be a good investment. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's very punny. Now, of course, it is a visual novel. Not all visual novels. Fun fact, not all visual novels have to be... Um, have to be romance, right? Visual novels can just be a platform for telling a story. Hard stop. It is basically a playable story. You cannot tell me that something like the Telltale Games um, are not basically visual novels. Sure, they've got a little bit more to it. Uh, yes, T-Bird has a vested interest in vests. All right, we're gonna kind of give that like I love rolled up sleeves too to go with vests. <laughs> I'm glad you confirmed that visual novels aren't always romantic. Well, this is something that we run into a lot here at the Toad House is, is there's this misconception, right? Of visual novels have to be something that has a romantic subplot. Um, and it's something that I run into when I'm, I'm talking to people. Somebody will come to me and say, hey, I've got this game idea you know, this is this is what the plot looks like, and this is what this looks like, and so on and so forth. And I'll be like, oh, cool, that would make a really good visual novel. And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. There's nothing romantic about it. And I'm like, but, but, you, but it doesn't have to be. Or they'll say, no, but I want this mini game in it. And depending on what you use as a program, you can put mini games into visual novels. Visual novels are not solely just the old format of walking through, talking to people, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, build, it, it's still a relationship and a narrative-based thing. It's like, oh, but, but if you do this with this character and not this with this other character, these things happen. I'm like, exactly. You can still have, it is, the other misconception is that uh, visual novels are inherently linear. Visual novels do not have to be linear. Um, there is nothing about visual novels that requires uh, linear storytelling. Um, sure, you can have a linear plot with branching dialogue options and branching um, story options based on your dialogue, but that's exactly it. That's like any other game you play. You start out with a linear story, and if somebody chooses the quote-unquote canonical answers, you have the linear story that you originally designed. But if you uh, start out with a... Um, or oh, are we drawing chaps on this chap? Um, if you start out, you know, if... 
Anytime you have decent, uh, can't not do chaps. I agree. I agree. Um, but like anything that has branching dialogue and plot options, Mass Effect um, has a linear story that happens to have some consequences for branching dialogue. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn is very linear, right? And so people thinking that visual novels are this inherently linear game is 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 actually um, quite far from it. You can have a lot more endings with a visual novel than you can with any other style of... Not any other style of game, but many other styles of game. Honestly, Mass Effect is a big budget visual novel. You know the other one that's a big budget visual novel? Um, probably not big budget, but like definitely reasonably big budget. Persona. Persona is just a visual novel. You cannot convince me otherwise. Persona is, is a visual novel. We're putting spurs on this person's shoes. And I'm going with a, because we're going with the cowboy aesthetic, I'm going to start going with some sharper um, edges. Uh, your first not visual novel is Phoenix Wright. <laughs> if you Google fan art of that. Um, 999 and Virtue's Last Reward. I have not, uh, I have not played those. I shall, I shall look into those, Dram. I mean, yeah, visual, Phoenix Wright is absolutely a visual novel. Tea time. Uh, someone did say tea time. Apparently, Tissid's yeah. tea service is here to um, give us some tea ASMR. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the turmeric ginger tea. All right, we're opening the tea bag because I use tea bags like a lazy person most of the time. <laughs> uh, my tea bag, by the way, comes with a uh, fortune on it. This, these are the Buddha teas. Um, and this fortune today says compassion for others. Oh, hello, what? Sophie. Oh, hold on. We, I don't know if you all heard the meow, but um, I'm going to introduce you to uh, our special guest today. Sophie. Sophie, what are you doing? Sophie. Yeah, that's Ringo's nail trimmer. You don't want to be over there. <laughs> Kitty. That's a cat butt. Yep. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Hold on, if we'd like some tea. There you go. Thank you. Have fun. So today's um, tea, inspirational tea quote is, Compassion for others begins with kindness to ourselves. Huh. That one's oddly convenient. He's a cat cam. So we're gonna leave the cat cam on for a minute while I do some, uh... More... We're definitely gonna have pointy shoes. We have to have pointy shoes. We will probably never see this character's shoes. We will probably never in the entire course of a visual novel, see this character's shoes. But I like to have those details just in case, you know, just just in case you might. Um, oh, goodbye, Sophie. All right, Sophie is gone. You just got back in time, just in time for Kitty. That was Sophie. Sophie is a good baby. We're gonna give this full, like, cowboy boots. We're, we're gonna do the full cowboy boot here. I don't know how we wouldn't be able to do the full cowboy boot. Gotta look up cowboy boots. Sophie is... Right? Sophie's perfect. Sophie! Uh, so, uh, I don't know if this... 
<laughs> this is too much for stream this morning. Um, however, I woke up this morning because Ringo hadn't eaten his dinner the previous night, and so his tummy was upset. So he woke me up uh, really early and said, my tummy's upset, I need to go outside and I need some food. And so I got up and I took care of the Ringo butt. And then Ringo's my dog. And then um, he's sleeping on the floor next to me. Um, and then I, I'm like, okay, maybe I have some time to get back to sleep. I might be able to get back to sleep. No big deal. And then Sophie cl decides that um, she wants to climb on the bed and hairball on top of me. That was the moment I decided that I was not sleeping this morning. How much of the character art is typically visual um, for it to feel normal? Usually two, two, uh, two to three quarters. Um, so usually either bust up or... Um, or like waist up. Oh yeah, no, Sophie. So Sophie had an upset tummy. Ringo had an upset tummy. Completely separate upset tummies. And yet, they both decided that it was me this morning. I was to wake up and take care of them. Right on top of me, too. I was like, oh, thank you for the cat. Thank you for the hairball, Sophie. I'm I'm so glad to have this. Uh. But yes, usually what you see for characters on visual novels is those shoes are not nearly big enough for the head. This is what happens when I zoom way in to do stuff, but that's okay. That's what we have tools for. Whoop. Oh no. Oh no, poor kitty. And poor you waking up with that. So yeah, normally what you see for characters in visual novels is you will basically see this much of them. Um, right here. What is selected. Um, you won't see much more than that unless there is a special scene that allows for that. We had one of our cats pee on the bed a month or two ago because they were mad. Yes, I used to have, um, I used to have my cats, um, I had a very, very sweet loving cat. He was, his name was Dobbin, he was a big, uh, he was a big furry black cat, and, um, as opposed to a not furry one, I suppose, but, uh, he was kind of angry. <laughs> when I would go visit. Now, it's not like he was left alone. He was left with, at the time, my partner. Um, but he would get really upset if I went home to visit my parents. Um, and I was gone for more than a day. And he would absolutely pee on my pillows. Because he was, he, he was, he was an angry cat like that. I love that cat to pieces. The lower third may be covered in text. Yes, you have to, but that being said, having full body sprites is very good for doing um, zoom out and in effects. So either having full body sprites, the occasional full body sprite, or having full body, um, full body uh, designs for um, unlockables is important to me. I've always designed my characters um, completely waist up and waist down. Like they get the full the full treatment.
Yep. And and we try to keep it so that um, you can you can appreciate the art uh, by hiding the text. I think uh, Renpai, which is what Alana was teaching the other day, um, kind of defaults to giving that option, as far as I understand it. But I am not the coder of us, so... Alright, so there's definitely chaps going on here. There's definitely chaps. We'll give them, like, a bag. Give them a bag right here. We'll give them another... Ooh, suspenders! Definitely suspenders! We're, we're bringing the suspenders down to the chaps. Guys, this is, this is, they need suspenders in their lives. Who doesn't need suspenders in their lives? Just got a call to head into work. All right, good luck, Dram. This outfit is too much and I love it. Good. So that's half the fun with visual novel design, right? Is you get to... You get to make these outfits too much. Like these are, it, if visual novels were the one place to go overboard with character designs, I'd say, I'd say absolutely. Like, and we're gonna actually pull this shoulder back a little bit just because pulling the shoulder back and we're gonna uh, give, I had a guitar, but I don't know where it is. Actually, I do know where it is. I left it with my ex. There we go. Here we go. Guitar. And we're just kind of, we know there's a guitar here. This is going to be kind of the, And we're gonna actually shrink this hat down a little bit up here. There we go. All right. So this is this is quite the outfit that we've got here. So now we have the tone for kind of what we want everybody else to be reacting to. Um, so. I want to give a little bit more, a little bit more of a, uh, a leg there. Because at this point, now that you've got the basic outfit down, you can start to do things like um, stylize it a bit more. So you can make sure that there's shapes and, and everything is aesthetically appealing. Um, this is where you will stylize things. And figuring out what the back of the outfit is once you have the front of the outfit is a lot easier. Um, we're gonna actually. See, this is why we do this on two different layers. We're gonna pop this guy over here, right there. Hello, friend. You're gonna hang out right there. All right. All right, they are almost ready. We're gonna get the back of the hat right here it's been a hot second since i've drawn now this right here is perfectly adequate quick sketch concept art now once you start getting into okay this design has been approved that's when you start going into more detail so we're gonna add in a belt. The belt is gonna be about here. Not every character needs like a hella thigh gap. Chat approves of the design. All right, good. And I'm pretty sure, yep, there we go. Chaps will come around this way. Chat approves the design. So we can move on to the next stage. So I always go a little less extra on the small details of the... of the turnaround until we get into the colors. 
So, next part of designing character, right? So this actually, this would apply to creating NPCs and the main character. Um, this is basically like, okay, cool. If you were to see the silhouette of this character, um, would you be able to recognize them? So the hat is definitely a good defining feature. What other defining features can we put on this character to make them easily recognizable? We'll figure that out as we go. But the fun part, the fun part for me, again, remember how I said I don't do character design where I do a clear delineation and then I fill. I do most of my, um, we're gonna hit the save button, by the way. Um, most of my illustration on one layer. Oh, jeebs. Oh, goodness. It's about to be a little cursed for a minute. Um, we're gonna go with a nice deep olive green skin for this half orc aesthetic. 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 And if you find yourself pressing down too hard and you are using a tablet, please do what I do. Increase the size of your brush. Now, could I delineate? Yes, yes, I could. Do I want to? Absolutely not. This is the way I go, I draw the fastest. Whatever way works for you is the way that you should use. Obviously, if your team has a certain method that it prefers, then you will be, you know, using that, that method. When I am just doing concept for freelance or contract, um, this is the method that I use. And I can, what I can do is I can reduce this opacity a little bit to make sure that I'm hitting all of the spots correctly of where everything is. Make sure that we get all those shapes in. Bring up the opacity again. The other thing that you can do is you can uh, put the sketch layer um, above the above the main layer and do like a burn or something to that effect just to get it to be oh yeah everyone ignores everyone ignores uh, the handbook tieflings there is literally a purple tiefling in the handbook and then it's like oh but our tieflings the tieflings are only shades of red and natural colors, but there is literally a purple tiefling in the handbook. So, <laughs> like, even the handbook doesn't listen to the handbook. The half work is purple too. Um, tieflings have human skin colors. Us, uh, so you mean every single color? Absolutely every single color. Every single color. Gotta get them teefies. We're now getting into those fine details, right? This is this is where we start to de determine those fine details of like, what's the character's mood gonna generally look like? Do they have a wider chin do they have what color eyes do they have it's fine to ignore things uh when they make it more fun for players exactly now yeah i agree ignoring some rules can be bla bad for the game um, but I think ignoring things like, um, well, your tiefling has to be exactly these colors, um, is, is not, you know, it, it does take away a little bit from the game, but I think that part of playing Dungeons and Dragons and part of playing any tabletop RPG, 
Um, the fun of playing a tabletop RPG is having clear, defined, and well-communicated expectations with the rest of your table, right? So if you have one person who um, feels slighted because they couldn't do this thing over here, like they couldn't make their tiefling purple um, because... Well, you know, that person over there got to be a, you know, a Persian tabaxi or whatever, you know, like, like a big white fluffy tabaxi. Um, well, that means that the expectations weren't clearly spoken of. And if you, everybody in your table says, no, we want to be like book legitimate, like everything's on... Every, everything's like rules is written, then that is what your, your group does. But you have to communicate that. If you are um, communicating that like, yeah, no, we can have some flavor stuff. So you can reskin a halfling to be this. That works too. Visuals only matter when you have much more grounded setting where things would mean something. Speaking of customizing your PC, have you done the art side of that for games? Um, I actually haven't created a character builder yet. Uh, it's something that I have been working on learning how to do. But I have created um, assets for um, customizing a character, right? So, like, character customization can be partially um, partially the coding for it and partially, like, what assets you put on it. T-Bird Picru. T-Bird should make a Picru. Um, T-Bird has talked about making pickers before. So what is this cow folks favorite color? You're bad at drawing pictures of your characters when the reasonable time frame. So you love you some pickers. That's fair. I draw all of my characters all the time, as you all could probably well imagine. So the important things when you are doing the character design in visual novels, obviously, the important things are delineating the face, figuring out what sort of like the face is going to look like, what sort of facial expressions there are going to be, and what the colors are. I want them to have one of those chins. Yeah, give me one of those chins. And one hella, like, I want them to have cheekbones so sharp they can, they can cut someone. Fuchsia. All right, somebody gave me a hex code, and now I'm kind of curious what this hex code looks like. I got you, hold up. Okay, yeah, all right. We have two for that. You know, I could make a Pickeroo. Pickeroo would not be difficult for me to make. So now we have, like, a basic idea of, like, what their face looks like. It's the official fuchsia. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Oh, boy, that's a color. It is, in fact, a color. It, it is now their favorite color. This is the character's favorite color now, and that is what their vest is going to be. And it is going to go fantastic, and by fantastic, I mean, I'm excited to see what this vest looks like. So 
So the things that are usually given when a character design is being made. Um, you usually are given, hi, this is this character's personality. This is what their background is. This is where, um, this is the general physical appearances that I want them to have. This is their favorite color. Whatever it is that the, um, the person gives you. Sometimes you're given more than others, right? Like, so sometimes you'll be given more direction on a character. Sometimes they'll be like, yeah, I haven't quite figured out what this character is going to look like yet, but this is what they, you know, this is what their role is and this is kind of what they I envision them to be like personality wise and then it's your job as the artist to come through and be like okay yeah let me take that and translate that into an actual physical aesthetic um there were a lot of times especially with um commissions with Alana um where I get the uh I would just want it to feel I want them to feel this way, right? And um, then that's on me to say, okay, what feels this way? These colors feel this way. So then I start setting colors and I start doing this color. Oh my gosh, this, <laughs> this half work would be terrible. Terrible. That's too much of a cheekbone I think no you know what leave them leave them cheekbones I love sharp cheekbones um this would be terrible for somebody who is colorblind I'm, I'm gonna put that out there now You know what, maybe not that. Maybe we're gonna do like a cream. Ooh, that is not, that's not a combination that I want. We don't, we don't want that. Wait. It's finally time for you to get away from the screen so you can uh, fall asleep tonight. All right, well, enjoy your sleep. Sleep well, it was good seeing you. Thank you for stopping in. Remember, sleep is important. Self-care, best care. We're gonna do environments next. Environments take me a lot faster. Environments are um, a lot of fun to me. So once we get the color done for the main part of this character's outfit, we are going to switch over to environments. Now, I will tell you, if somebody came to me with this, uh, this would be a very memorable character. Um, because I am putting white as one of the character's colors, I'm going to either create a splash in the background or I'm going to just change the background color to a neutral gray. Um, that is not where I want to do that. I want to do that down here. <laughs> Dorp. There we go. This makes this all pop just a little bit more. Oops. Ah yes, posture check. I am sitting like a gremlin. We're gonna we're gonna show you guys just how much of a gremlin we are. I will tell you, I've been I've been sitting like this. It is time to sit up. And don't forget to stretch. Hands up, kind of straight down back up if you can and just kind of like give yourself a little bit of a range of motion kind of loosen up the shoulders especially if you've been sitting like a gremlin like i have i am also very sweaty it is very warm in this room all of a sudden um probably because i have my computer and it's trying it's crying a little inside um but don't forget to get a little bit of stretching in um It is good to get stretching in. It is good to get a good posture. Um, there's some really good stretches that you can do against the wall to help if you are a gremlin like me and you have trouble maintaining posture. And 
And I'm already going to tell you guys right now that I already know what color this guitar is going to be. This guitar is going to be the color of my old guitar. <laughs> because sometimes it's nice to throw in a little bit of yourself into your work. You just wrote up a small document about settlement and management for D&D 5e. Nice. All right, let's get a nice color for the belt. I imagined going into this, I imagined this belt was going to be black with probably a gold buckle. I think we might switch to a silver buckle with this, but nothing quite says bard like black leather chaps. Well, thank you, RTS bot. That is a good reminder. <laughs> there we go. We'll just give like a, a quick... color in the, the legs a little bit. And we're going to actually have the band of the hats and the hats pull up colors from below. Now, Note that the hair is black and I'm making a black hat. Um, this is, we're actually gonna switch back to the drawing so you can see a little bit closer. Um, this is a case where I will use two similar but very uh, noticeably different shades within that space. And then we'll probably pull in the, um, the boots. I'm probably gonna do this thing with the boots. Because cowboy boots can be all kinds of colors. Um, so I'll probably make these like a dark magenta with magenta tips. But obviously your soles are probably going to be brown, black, gray. I, I'm trying to figure out what color to fill in the pants at this moment. Um, what I probably will do is I'm actually going to make the underside of the hat purple. Because I feel like that's good. Maybe I'll give them purple pants. Go like a darker purple. And that way we have like a set color scheme, right? We've got three primary colors that we're using for them. You can do three or four primary colors for a character. You could even do five. Um, but I try to keep, when I do my basic character designs, I try to keep it relatively simple. Um, I find the more simple it is, the better, the easier it is to... The easier it is to manage those colors. And their color scheme might change. Um, you might submit this design and the the lead might say, mm, I don't know, I don't like the pink and the, uh, the green together. I'm getting some Barney vibes, right? Um, and that does happen. So always know how to, in my case, um, the ways I color swap. Um, I do a slightly different thing with color swapping than uh, than you would if you were doing like delineation and fill. 
um, I use the color replacement tool. So say I wanted this to be dark blue. There we go. Suddenly they have jeans. But it feels weird to me that that one section is blue and it drives your eye right there. And I don't like that. I'd rather it be purple and me be able to... Toad support totes and you're living oh, proof. Oh, wow. Thank you for gifting so many... has gifted 15 subs to viewers. So many gift subs. RNG world, you are awesome. Can we get some toads in chat for RNG world? That is amazing. Thank you for gifting so many subs to the Toad House. I'm going to throw some, some toads in chat. And also some hypes. Not, not a GDQ clap. Well, you know, we'll th throw a GDQ clap in there. Why not? Thank you so much. It's good to see those toads in chat. I enjoy drawing those toads, honestly. And as we're celebrating, don't forget to hydrate, but thank you for dropping all of those subs to Team Toad House. Um, your support goes to the production and um, creation of more uh, Call Me Sarah games and go to goes towards our, um, our end goal. So it goes to supporting, it goes to supporting not only your streamers, but your, uh, the games that are coming out too. Yes, th thank you for paying Maya. <laughs> your subscriptions go to feeding, uh, creative types in the Toad House team. And the and I mean we're all creative types in the Toad House team to be honest. Maya's creative. Composer Kirk's creative. Alana's creative. I exist. No <laughs> I exist. But um here we go. So we kind of have a basic idea of what we want this character to look like. Yes. Say it. Say what? Say what? What am I saying? Say I'm creative. I am creative. I come up with some weird solutions for things too sometimes. Weird. I'm like the MacGyver of like fixing houses and stuff. Everybody in the club creative. All right, here we go. And we're going to add a little bit of like a shirt drop here because I like, I like it when the shirts don't just like sit there. A water bot says obey them. And um, I'm afraid of water bot. I'm just going to tell you all that water bot. I know water bot knows where I live. All right. Like. You might want to obey Waterbot. Isn't creative creativity just coming up with solutions for problems? That is true. All right, here we go. We're just kind of, at this point, tidying up the main design. Well, you don't... It depends on whether or not this gets approved, whether you do the turnaround, but this is the main design. Now, in a visual novel, you might only see the upper third of this character. Or, if this is the main character, which I believe it is, uh, you might not even see it on screen except for, for um, unlockables anyway. However, 
it's good to have an idea of what the whole outfit is and be able to sample the colors so that if you do come up to a situation where you have to redraw them, you can. These colors are absolutely something, chat, and I appreciate you guys for helping me pick them out. They're definitely memorable. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I should do a Picru uh, D and D character generator. I think that could be fun. I am not purposefully trying to avoid drawing the hands. It's just that in this case. Unless there's something about the hands in particular, like they're wearing gloves or what have you. Um, gloves, really nice. Um, bracelets or jewelry or something like that, or they have something different about their hands. Um, hands are probably not as important for this portion because we still need to draw. I am getting heavily messaged. I don't even have that open. My apologies. If you guys hear notification sounds, um, my my sincerest apologies. Uh, I don't know why one of my apps has started giving me notifications and I need to go and shut off desktop, desktop notifications. It updated recently and um, y'all know how that goes. Sometimes when it update when apps update, they're like, oh hey, you you obviously want wanted these uh, these features all along, and I'm like, I didn't though. There's nothing about these features that I that I wanted. Here we go. All right. So we have this is the color of their guitar. They are presently except for yellow. Oh no, they are. They are CMYK. Ah, uh, I love that. Like black, yellow, yep, mm-hmm. Just quick shorthand for a guitar and what colors their guitar would be. Now for doing sprites, um, one thing that you want to be able to do for sprites is you want to be able to um, draw out some faces for them, right? So you want to know what their emotional states would be. Uh, so once the writers kind of give you an idea, um, you need to determine how many facial expressions you really need. So think about it this way, right? Um, someone looking sad can also be used as a sarcastic sad or a grumpy or a uh, various other ones. And that will actually help with keeping things like scope creep out of there because you'll want 
a million different uh, facial expressions for your characters, but you'll find you really only probably need like six or seven. Um, maybe eight if you want to be really, really extra with it, or you want to have um, a specific scene that has its own facial expression. Um, but six or seven um, at the most is honestly all you really need for almost any given character, um, unless they have some sort of arc where they change. Um, which does happen, right? So you might have an arc where there are, their art changes. Um, so if you have an art an arc where their art changes, obviously you might need extra art for that. There, quick guitar. I'm sure the music, uh, the music people in chat are just like, mmm, is that really guitar though? It's for a general idea. So this is the concept slash reference sheet. So it doesn't, it, it, it's not, it has no strings. It does, they're just really tiny strings. Really tiny awful strings. There, yeah. there, now it's, now it's got better strings. And you got the little dots under there. And then we're gonna add some toes here. This is actually going to be flatter than you think because of the way that the toe works. Okay, so maybe it is. It's just like, you know what, Picasso. We're going with Picasso. Picasso can do the thing. I can do the thing. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It has the concept of strings. Exactly. It only needs to have the concept of strings. And that's really all it needs. It doesn't need to have like exact strings or... Now, note, I've used the same brush for most of this. I have other brushes that I would use if I was tidying this up to like full finish. But for concept, you really don't need full polish unless you are asked to do full polish for say marketing or some other uh, good reason. Um, or even not good reason, just some other reason. It doesn't have to be a good reason. It can just be a reason. If you want to polish it, then polish it. But... All right, here we go. And at this point, it's more just like, okay, quick hand for, shorthand for like, this is foldy, it's kind of loose. And we have a little bit of screen tear going on, but that's fine. This is a very friendly looking, chill orc dude. Like, this is our uh, non bardinary bard. Bardinary? Bardinary. I like bardinary. They just want to play you a song, exactly. Sing me a song. You're the guitar person. It doesn't work as well as the piano man, does it? All right, so, you know, basic design. Uh, we do probably want to add in a couple of things like buttons. 
We can have buttons on both sides of this. I kind of like the idea of having buttons. Now, something that I learned um, from other concept artists is there are other things that you can do within a character design, right? So whenever you have a really symmetrical outfit design, um, that's great. But if you want a character to seem slightly off balance, use a lot of diagonals. Use a lot of, um, like, look at Loki, right, from um, the Marvel Universe. In... Thor Ragnarok, Loki's outfit became very, um, kind of asymmetrical. Asymmetrical is the word that I was looking for. Um, and once you start getting that asymmetrical aesthetic that shows that somebody's slightly off balance and, and it's kind of like a visual representation of that. Um, and those are some fun tools that you can use. You can use, um, contrasting colors that don't work really well together. Um, you can use, cause colors work really well as a, colors and shapes work really well as kind of a, a quick guide to a, um, to a character's psyche. So say I were to take this outfit, right? Say I were to take this outfit and I would, I would leave, um, I would take off this vest or I would take this vest and I would make this vest like this. And we're going to make this really like, And we're gonna just replace it with uh, get rid of this. Cover the shoulder. So this shoulder is one over here. It's a cool design um, to start with, but also it gives you a slightly different feel for the character. And also the more belts, the better. <laughs> and like, say we got rid of like one sleeve entirely in this, in this version. This is where uh, me practicing um, letting people adjust my artwork uh, comes in really handy. So say somebody, say um, what came in was, hey, I want, I like this character design, but I want them to see just a little more, a little more off balance, right? Um, how would you make that look? And this is, this is how I would, and this is how I would work that, right? I would start working through, okay, what sort of things can I do to change the, um, aesthetic of the character to have them be a little more visually off-putting, I guess? For some reason, they only have one chap. Give them some rope. And then you've got some other, like, you've got a different... Different feel for this. Uh, let's see here. What else do I want to add? So 
So this gives the character like a whole different, this one actually kind of gives him a slightly McCree feel. I know we're going for, we're going down the McCree line with the, uh, the partial poncho here. What we could do is we could say, oh, this goes over here. Kind of give him some, like, give them some Dragon Ball Z shoulders. I mean, who knows? A glove? A single glove? And then this is also playing with shapes, right? Like your sharp angular shapes here are gonna give a different aesthetic to um, to all the rounded shapes. So, I mean, there's some different things you can do to play around with the character design, um, depending on what is requested. I can even bring this all the way down back back down actually what we can do is we can just erase just just erase that bring the sleeve back look it's a sleeve guys i'm bringing sleeves back what there we go now he kind of has more of a oh what what what, what would you say this is a three musketeers vibe they've got they've got a three musketeers vibe going on Great cover. I, I'm really good at that. You know, making covers for, for songs. Super good at that. Su super good. Fingerless gloves. Easier to play with. So just some fun things that, that you know, you can mess around with. Take this part off and then have this, this shoulder up and have that down. So once you have the basic design down, it's just basically after that tweaking. Sleeves back by <laughs> by Tustine Jimberlake. Exactly. I kind of do that in my household a lot. I um I'm one, the one who memes in song lyrics. I'm the one who memes. Um but yeah. So you can play around some different fun design styles with that. Uh, once you have the main character illustration down. Um, and like I said earlier, the other thing that you'll want to do is kind of figure out like what style of the facial expressions. Um, Tustine Jimberlake, absolutely. Tustine Jimberlake. They are now Tustine Jimberlake and that is, I'm good with that. But now it's a matter of like, for, for character designs, you know, you, you want to figure out like what, what are their facial expressions when they're, when they're angry? You know, when they're sad, when they're upset at that point, Tuskeen, ah, yes, we can fix that. Tuskeen. I'm here for it. Now, normally I reserve a little bit of space for that over here. Um, I would reserve a little bit of space for, you know, your facial expressions all down this way. And I, I would even consider doing like a facial expression chart. Um, having different turnarounds of the face, figuring out what the shape looks like of each one. This also helps define, are there any facial features that you're missing in this? Um, it 
doing different facial expressions is kind of my favorite part of doing this. Um... And if they're not perfect, that's all right. You're just kind of getting a general vibe for what this character is going to be like. So that way the sprite artist, whether that's you or not, can kind of like run off with that and say, okay, I've got an idea. Let's go. Do the faces with different expressions get stored as separate assets from, from the body? Or do you essentially have copies of the same character or with a, the, only the expression changed? Ah, that is a darn good question. And I appreciate that question. Um, let me show you um, an example of the early art that we did for Nicole. Now, Nicole has changed since. And uh, most of this is pretty well public at this point. But... Let me pop into my files and I can give you an example of one of the ways that we have done sprites in the past. It's not in that folder, it's in this folder. I can show you first. Let's start off with the concept art for Nicole. This is the concept art for Nicole. This was the final design for Nicole. Now, that changed very drastically from the early design for Nicole. Um, so you have all of these different hairstyles that we tried out for her. Um, they were all sent out as a, um, into the community to, uh, you know, get some feedback, see what people think. Um, but you see the level of finish on these, right? These are basically kind of what I've just drawn only maybe a little with a little bit more spit polish to them. But you get a little bit of an idea of who Nicole is. Now, this ended up being the finalized one. But before we got to that point, um, I actually had created for our uh, vertical slice and for our demos, I had created a set of temporary sprites. Now, there are a couple of places where I've set I've created just sprites for. Um, in this case, um, this is where I kept, I redrew her in every pose possible. So in this case, I actually redrew the body to fit the sprite's expression because body language is just as important as facial uh, uh, um, like like expressions and and you know your your facial language i guess uh body language is just as important um so when you're going to see a character with you know A character with their hands on their their hips or their their hands in their pockets. It's a little bit more guarded. Um, this also goes into the Jessica sprites, which were early used. This was Jessica's original design. Uh, side note: Jessica's design changed really heavily when we brought um, our sprite artist in. Um, but this was Jessica's original design for Good Looking Home Cooking. So you can see a really big difference between the body language in this one and the body language in this one. Now, there is an asset to that that's changed, which is, or that's the same, which is the hand on the hip. But there are a couple of other bodily exp body expressions in here that we were going to be using. Um, the same thing kind of goes for Amira. 
Amira's original design, this was also used in our, um, this was also used in our demo. Oop. But you can see, you know, not only does her head turn down, but her hands start to clench. So this was Amira's original design and then kind of what we were, what we were going for, um, as the... So they, these are all kept separately. Um, now, you can keep them as separate files. I keep them as separate PNGs. You can kind of see here. Um, Amani's is separate from everything else. Um, this is... Hold on. That one was the one that was unfinished. That was the draft one. This is the finished one. Um, this was a concept sketch that I did for Amani uh, a while ago. Which, Amani is probably my favorite character design of the game. Um, Amani's character design was a lot of fun for me uh, because I had to take this, this woman, she's a little bit older, um, she's a little bit more established, very confident in herself, very confident in her um, business, and also kind of a weeb. So I had to take that and tie it all together and create this design for Amani. And this is probably one of my favorite illustrations that I have done for the concept for Call Me Sarah. But it does get saved as individual um, bodies and expressions. These, this was the earliest one. So you can see it kind of like changing like her, her, her whole like body changing with that. So again, this is the amount of the character that you're going to see on the screen. You might see a little bit more. You might draw down to the knees just in case. Um, I don't want to cha save changes, but this is another, this is one of the earlier um, sheets. If you had to do things uh, more quickly, what would you have cut out a number of expressions, complete poses, changes, overall quality? Um, we actually did things very, very quickly with this. Um, Call Me Sarah and its designs came together relatively quickly. I feel like the question is, because we did have to end up cutting a lot more for the concept art than I would have liked. Um, however, then we had two artists collaborating on that basically, uh, which made things a little bit easier. But um, I think if we had had a little more time, uh, I would have probably... been able to come up with a few more, more polished designs with the colors and everything. Um, but as far as doing things quickly, doing things quickly, uh, you end up with less of this and more of this, right? Um, this, but maybe very, very hastily blocked in. Let me show you under concept art, um, a good example of a very, a much faster one. Once we started going fast, this was the original design for Billy. Billy has changed, so this is okay to show because this is no longer the design for Billy. But this was the original design for Billy. This was a maybe, maybe 45 minute concept, maybe. Um, what do you focus on when your game is to finish within a month? Uh, give yourself, uh, if you wanna have multiple characters, maybe three expressions. Make them simple. Make the character simple. Don't add a hat. So don't add, unless the hat is really easy for you to draw. Um, don't add a, um, so if we were to say simplify this guy down, right? So let's take, and let's simplify this character down for speed of drawing's sake. All right. First things first, he, he's already, they're already pretty simple, right? Um, but let's take and let's Remove the suspenders. Let's take that part out. Because you don't need to be able to, you don't need to have to worry about where the suspenders are. Right? Reuse assets where you can reuse ass assets. So um, when you're reusing assets, um, reuse this body shape. So say you are, um, I'm gonna undo all that because I like the suspenders, but, um, and I didn't mean to do that directly on the layer. 
Um, but if you're going to make a game in a month, um, make your characters really simple. Um, maybe you make it that they are waffles. Maybe you make it that they are this, but you only do three facial expressions. Uh, make them very generic, right? You can make a grumpy, you can make a thoughtful, and you can make a really happy one and have that cycle through really easily. Um, simplify the number of characters you have. And if you were to turn this guy into multiple facial expressions, kind of pop in here, change where the eyes are, pop up here, reduce that. You can just change the facial expressions. That is totally okay. But suddenly, this is a completely different, you know, expression on this character. You don't have to draw every single one from scratch. You can reuse and recycle. Reusing assets is, um, and now, now they're kind of animated. Look at that. They're just, they're just glancing around suspiciously. They're incredibly sus. So you don't have to do the full body shapes. Um, that feels like magic. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, the mouth, the eyebrows, the cheekbones. Um, how did you do that so quickly? Uh, this is part of, well, I mean, part of that is, is, is practice. Part of that is having a maybe reference to facial expressions, right? Um, making the facial expressions that you want to uh you want to emulate um so from here the clear the clear one is unhappy and knowing like what Kind of selecting the colors. And now you've got almost half of a conversation, right? Just by changing a couple of small features about them. And you could even change where the hand is. You could say, I want this hand in touching, touching the chest at this point. Um, leave the body alone, but maybe move the hand, right? So now you have, now you have three facial expressions. Oops. And they're all very consistent because you're using the same model. Now they're, the happier you are or the more surprised you are, now if I were to take this one and make this one bigger, Right, I, I do this one again, and I want to maybe make this one surprised. So now you suddenly have and now you'll suddenly have at that point four facial expressions to work with. Now you, you make the eyebrows go up further, furrow them in a little bit, uh, maybe add in the, the lower, the upper teeth because the lower teeth aren't the only ones that exist. And suddenly you have another facial expression that you can use. 
Maybe uh, if they're surprised, maybe the inside of their eye goes up like this, right? So now, surprised, happy, sus, and grumpy. Right? So now you have four facial expressions you can work with. And we've been here what? Well, we've been here two hours. But you don't need to take that long. I've taken a lot longer in explaining things and going through the processes and trying some different things. It is shortcut to uh, visual novel land. Although this one kind of gives me the mask vibe, so we're going to take that one off. It has been two hours. So let's do a quick jaunt into environment land. Um, I did say two to two and a half, so let's try to take a quick jaunt into environment land. Um, let me take a quick break for you guys. Get up, walk around, get a glass of water. We have been here two hours. Um, so we'll take a quick break and then we're gonna come back for environment land. Environment land will be about uh, 30 minutes. It shouldn't take me too long to do environments. Um, all right, with that, we will be right back.
All right, and we are back. Um, God, my hair is a mess. Hello, hair. It's going poof. There's a little bit of humidity happening, if you can't tell. Whoosh. Whoosh. All right, I know it probably has not been exactly five minutes. I'm pretty sure it's been approximately five minutes, but I hope you got up. I hope you stretched. I hope you got some water. I hope you enjoyed your break. Um, we are back with... More fun. Yeah, hair go floof. Um, humidity makes my hair go burr. <laughs> uh, I know it doesn't look it, but um, I have a lot of... Um, the hair texture is thick like my father's side, but it is frizzy like my mother's side, which is um, predominantly Irish. And the only reason uh, my mother's side doesn't burn is because it's Irish and Native American. So they don't burn as easily, so we don't have that, like, you walk out in the sunlight and you turn into a crispy, crispy mess. Um, but on my dad's side, I also don't burn because we are very tan. Uh, you poofed and made mac and cheese. Well, welcome back. Um, we are here in time to make an environment. So, cool stuff about making environments. Um... Environments are the thing I probably do best out of anything, right? Especially, especially, especially fantasy sort of things, all right? Um, so, a couple of things about environments. Um, if you are doing ones that are organic, like you're out in a field, you don't really need to put your vanishing points in there. You do need to have vanishing points, but like... It's a little bit more like you've got trees behind you. Okay. So you're going to try to rush through doing some environments. You want to like really bang out some environments for a visual novel. Say you have a month to make a game. Um, things that you're going to want to think about are what sort of things are really, really, um, really, really easy to draw. Um, you hope to get good at environments one day? It's so cool. Well, all it takes is a little bit of practice. You can do it. You can do it. Um, environments are the thing I probably do the best um, out of all the things that I do. Um, there are a couple of ways to get good uh, perspective. Um, I sometimes cheat and there's these perspective brushes you can get. If you look perspective brushes for your various um, tools, and you want for a visual novel, you want to set your um, you want to set your ground line a little lower, and your eye line about midway, right? Um, so whatever you want your your sight lines to be, you're you're gonna want them about midway. Um, so that one's gonna go here, and over to this side. This one. Oop! I didn't want to do that. Ah! <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. I'm gonna create a second one and the second one's gonna come right here. All right, so now we have two of these and you can manipulate these. This is for like inside of a room. Um, you don't have to do two point perspective. You can do single point perspective if that is easier for you. But regardless, perspective is nice and it's nice to have these little tools to say, ah, yes, this is what this would look like. Um, now, obviously, these are too even. Um, if I was doing two-point perspective, I'd have one, like, way over here. And, like, spread that boy out. And then do one. Like, stop it. I said stop it. I just want to move you to over here, right? So now you have like a big long room, you can figure that out. 
So say you wanted to have um, a street corner. Let's do a medieval street corner. All right. Now this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge for me because buildings at ground height, I'm, I tend to be a little more... I tend to be better with the organic backgrounds. Um, your far off castles, your, your natural environments. Um, why are these so zoomed out? I have so many brushes, it's hard to find. Gouache, less opaque, here we go. And then you start to figure out, okay, we're gonna take a different brush and we're gonna be like, all right, so this is gonna be, there's gonna be like a saloon back here, I guess. So we're gonna take and we're just gonna like fill in where this saloon would be. I don't know what a saloon, like a fantasy saloon is gonna look like, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out together, right? But you want environments that you can reuse over and over again. Um, maybe with different lighting, maybe with different seasons, maybe with different, um, like night and day. So there are ways to do that. Um, so let's, let's create like a little, little downtown or something, right? Now you can do this in um, like a like a an Illustrator clone. You can do this in. It's actually easier doing this with 2D um, in some cases. Oops. And this will be like a fence in the back. So this fence will just kind of like swing to the back, right? I probably actually want to move all of this down because if you look at visual novel backgrounds, it's like, Like you're standing on a street corner looking at something, right? Um, all right, back to this. So we've got some, some buildings and stuff we can use. So at this point, you're just drawing boxes, right? You don't have to do anything, anything too fancy, just drawing boxes. The flavor of your boxes is what matters. Like, do you, do you want a strawberry box? Do you want a vanilla box? Like, which, which you want for your boxes? Oops, all boxes, exactly, exactly. And you're just kind of getting an idea of what you would want this to look like. Now, quick trick, if you are using Photoshop or um, many other drawing programs, um, if you are drawing in a straight line, like up, down, side, or side, side to side, uh, which is why you can turn your image really, really well, um, A really cool trick is holding shift as you draw. Watch this perfectly straight line. Whoa. I don't want that line there. But we're gonna just kind of block out, right? We're gonna add some trees back here. This is gonna be the other side of the road over here. So there's, there's probably gonna be some other buildings. 
Uh, maybe not as big of a building. Maybe we'll do a general store. And then some, like, shrubs. Because we're gonna create this sense of wild out here. Don't know what kind of wild, but there's gonna be the sense of wild out here. Um, so we definitely want to have, like, a little... A window for this one. Uh, maybe we have a sign that juts out, right? A sign that juts out and... So now this is just like, at this point, this is just a quick, 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 quick set of buildings. Um, but it doesn't need to be anything spectacular on the underdrawing. Um, the flavor comes with, you know, what's in your horizon line. This is my horizon line out here. Uh, I'm going to have some horizon line over here. We're going to have some buildings on this side. And of course, the buildings are actually going to angle in this way. Because they're going out of that. And we're gonna have some more like natural stuff coming through here. I mean, this is a fantasy town, so. Have some trees pop up about. So if you don't wanna draw like too many buildings, if you're like, I really don't feel like dealing with buildings, don't deal with buildings, just don't do it. If that is not what you're confident in, don't do it. If you want the practice, then do it. Um, but you are not, don't feel like obligated just because But basically the idea is to have something that like, oh, this feels like a place that a character, let's take a character, open recent, let's grab this one. Here we go. I like, I like this. Uh, let's take his, there, there we go. Let's take you and put you right there. So it's like, okay, let me, let me resize you. They definitely need another layer so, like, I can clear them up. But this is kind of what you would look at on the visual novel, right? Do they look like they fit? If they don't look like they'd fit, then adjust it from there. Because you'd, you'd see this pop up. Now, you can adjust the size of a character, and you can adjust, like, where they're going to sit. Um, but it's a good idea to, once in a while, say, all right, all right, I'm digging it, but, like, it could be better. Let me see if I can get... Uh, Can I, can I just, like, make this bigger? Could I, could I please? Ooh, 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 here we go. I almost found it. My, um, Photoshop is a little wonky these days. And doesn't exactly work the way I want it to. Any, uh, uh tips for lining up characters and backgrounds so it looks like they fit better? Um... Yeah, draw your backgrounds with the idea of where your character is going to go. Um, so, for instance, we know that our character is going to go here. We want the saloon to be visible in the background. So, let's make the saloon more visible in the background. And at this point, I'm going to get rid of these lines because I feel like they're... they're to my detriment. So you can take, once you have your sketch down, so this is, this is just a basic sketch. I don't know why this is being like this. This doesn't have to be like this. Photoshop 
Photoshop, please. There we go. Oh, I didn't want that. I didn't, I didn't want this character to move too. There we go. There we go. So you want it to be like, think about somebody standing in picture, right? Um, look up a picture of a person in say like a tourist location. Um, how big is the building compared to the character? Maybe you drew more than you need. Maybe this amount of the saloon is more than sufficient. Maybe this amount is more than sufficient. And actually, I kind of like that. Have them look like they're coming out of the saloon. This is honestly a good proportion. Um, if you have your stuff further away, right? So say you have this all the way out here the way it was. Uh, exactly, two backgrounds in one. It is a great way to do that. You can say, okay, this is how I have this background. And then you can scoot it around. Draw the whole thing and then scoot it around and say, okay, this one versus this one. And you can do some color swaps again to be day versus night. So um, for this, if he was, if this character was this close, uh, they don't have a block to me, for me to move them. Okay, here we go. Um, then they would be, if that was that far away, then this character would look a lot bigger on the screen. They'd look this big on the screen, right? Because you're really zoomed into them and not to what's in the background. Um, the other thing you could do is be like, oh, so they're further away. You'd have them all the way, the all the way the heck over there. But why would you do that in a visual novel? You don't need to do that in a visual novel. Um, so I find that uh, making it so that about two thirds to three quarters of them fits on the screen and you have a little bit of a buffer um, is great. I do have sizes. This actual, this image is 1920 by 1080. So if you watch, oh, it's doing it by inches. So I apologize for those of you who um, work in not inches. It gives me like a size to work with. Um, but in this case, I don't think I need all the stuff that I drew. I can zoom way the heck in. And this is a great background. Look at that. That's ideal. It's not too busy. It gives you some context clues. And it gives you a little bit of an environment in the background. And some really good curves. I like curves. So what we're going to do from here is over the sketch at this point. Now is going to be when I'm going to block in some colors. Right? And this doesn't have to be this zoomed in, actually. Like, this could be a little less zoomed in. But like I said, think about taking a picture of your friends. Think about any road trip you've ever been on. Um, let me give you an example, actually. Use photo reference as much as possible. Um, let's see if I've got a picture of any of my friends in front of, or myself in front of any sort of structure. Because I have lots of selfies. If nothing else, I have lots of selfies. All right, here's a good example of, let's see here. Yeah, I'm a little far away on that one. Here's a picture of my sister and I, but that's not what I want to do. I know I have ones where like I am selfieing in front of a building. Oh, you know what? This is a good example right here. Let's look at Hershey Park in Pennsylvania. Look at how big that building is. Now, imagine having a character. Let me, uh, there we go. It's already gone into the edit screen for me. Imagine your character being right here. So this is about the height, well, maybe not the height, because everybody's about the same height, but like in fantasy land, right? Um, in fantasy land, your character would be taller. So your, uh, your hat, friend might be 
this big on this screen. So think about how these shapes work and use something like that. Like even copy these shapes, right? And be like, okay, I like this shape. Maybe I don't like this building. Maybe I want this building to drop off and I want there to be trees over here and I want there to be a tree up here. Uh, maybe this isn't this far. Maybe this isn't a, a turret, right? You want this to drop off over here. What did I do? Maybe you want this to drop off over here, more trees. And then um, you can kind of, you can take and you can, you can simplify it, right? This could be a really good saloon if I let it be, right? And you don't have to copy, but you can take and use reference. Um, so if I was smart, I'd be using reference. Um, you can do it from your mind or you can do it from reference. And doing it from reference gives you this, right? and then puffy clouds. And then you can get rid of this stuff up here, right? And that way you're like, okay, so it's not really like, but you know the scale of this. Some trees down here. maybe make it a path maybe make it a path to come from there but if you were closer up to this building then this building would take up a lot more this is probably this is probably at least based on like how many people are there this is probably at least 50 feet from that building right you are pretty far in front of that building at that point um, when you're taking this picture so this makes sense Now you don't have to keep your your character image there. Um, it can go wherever. Um, like I I'll probably just make make them disappear for a little while. And we'll just kind of color block in at the moment. And we're gonna, we're gonna probably change out some of the colors of some of the trees. Like I want some of these to be more like a dark tree. And you can do this on multiple layers too. So say you want all of this background stuff to be on one layer, right? Just give it a quick whoop. Cause you want, you want some of those trees. You don't wanna just have the one kind, right? So you, you don't have to do that. But I mean like in this case, Don't be afraid of listening to Bob Ross. Bob Ross knows environments. All right, give this some picture. And let's see if we can speed draw out a quick environment. And I'll show you what I mean about them being used for multiple seasons. Let's give this, let's make these like a brown building over here. Now, normally I'll do my buildings and everything on different layers so that I can have a fully fleshed out background layer and a fully fresh fleshed out building layer and then I can change things up as need be. Um, but in the case of this, we're gonna, because we're speed drawing this one, right? This is a, oops. I want that lighter. That's better. It already looks better than your finished drawings. It's just a little bit of, you know, all it is is it's a little bit of practice, right? Um, 
So that's not the color I want. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. That'll happen. Right? So let's give this, let's make this a brown building. The saloon is going to be brown and various other browns, I guess. Because wood, right? Wood and stone. Those will be our two materials. Thinking about other saloons. And this over here is going to be kind of the, the rocky deck, right? So we're basically just blocking in at this point. And then after that, we'll add detail. Like we'll add the stripes for the, for the building. Now, this is too orange, but, and we'll add this building back here is going to be pre predominantly stone, but it's going to be behind these shrubberies. We're going to do like a deep red because this is fantasy after all, right? So we'll do a, a deep red awning. It's more of a deep pink, but you know, who's counting? And you can kind of see the, the hint of the other one over there. Oh, did it freeze? Oh no, it froze. Let's hit that escape button. Ooh, we had quite the freeze here. Oh no. Okay, well, it's back now. Oh, it's not that it froze is that my tablet pens decided it no longer wants to exist. All right. Oh, we got to stretch. Don't forget to stretch. It is 4.30, 4.30 is for stretching. It seems we might have some technical difficulties here. By technical difficulties, I mean my tablet pen is deciding it doesn't want to cooperate. Oh no. All right. Well, unfortunately, I'll have to finish this one later because um, I'm I will have to do some really weird things to fix that. But what I can do in the meantime is I can give you examples of other quick environments, or I can very quickly do. Uh, can I? Oh, it's working. Hold on. Oh, it's back. Never mind. It was just being. It was being dramatic, guys. It was being dramatic. Even tablet pens need rests. Maybe it just wanted to stretch. All right, so we're gonna give this kind of the... And if you need it, um, bring those, um, those lines back up, right? So we're gonna have some like carriage lines going on here. When the deep red it moved the it's okay to have some items of interest in the backgrounds i can show you some of the other backgrounds that i've done um let me pull up some environments that i have done um and that way it, it's a good example of some of the ones that like they start off like this and then they slowly start to become something a little bit more so if you go into what is environment tober here we go uh this one right here Mia, where is it? Mia. Um, this one. I don't know if the curses are still up. My apologies if they are. They are not. This one might rate Mia. Um, this is another 19 by 20 by 1080. It is a very prominent background, right? Very noticeable, very prominent. There's a lot going on with it. But 
I mean, you, you can still make this work, right? So even if it is, do I want to, oh no, I don't want to do that. Okay. Um, let's try another one. Let's go with, how about this one? This one is going to be very similar. And then this one's going to be a little different because look at how close you are to the bar, right? So the character has to be that close to the bar for this one. So just because there's really like interesting features in the background doesn't mean that it's going to detract from the character because the character and the narrative, really the narrative is the key for a good visual novel. So it's okay if your environments start out like this, right? This is, I can tell you, like you've seen some of my other stuff now. Um, it, it doesn't just appear all the time. Now, if I was doing a woods thing, this would be a lot faster, but most narrative things take place. So have your backgrounds be interesting. Have your backgrounds have a slight animation to them. Have them have whatever. As long as you have the time and the willpower to do it. Now, don't burn yourself out on the backgrounds or anything. It's okay for them to just be like a blurry environment in the back. Um, that is totally understandable and something that a fair amount of people do. Make sure everything's lined up like this, this door, not lined up. This, this door is not lined up. Right, so. Oh, thank you. Hopefully they give you some uh, inspiration. Um, those were all my drawing a day drawings from October. Um, I, every, every year, I do, and I in, invite the Toad House in. Um, I do Environment Tober, and Environment Tober, I'll make a bunch of prompts, um, and I will. Uh, they can be any kind of environment. Are you a writer? Then sure, write something. Um, you can write anything beautiful, a poem, a story. Um, are you an illustrator? Well, illustrate something. Um, can you not do every day? Sure. You can do as many days as you have time and comfort for. Um, and it's a really good way to practice. So I needed it because I needed to work on my environments because I felt like that was an area where I could improve. Um, and there's a definitive difference between my early ones and my later ones. So... You are welcome to join in this year. Obviously, um, I have not gotten out the prompt list yet. But once I get that out in October, then it is open season. All right, now we can start to get rid of this. Now, at this point, you can start to see things starting to come together. Um, it's not ideal yet. It, just like that character, right? It starts out really rough, and then you slowly, once you have the basic idea of what it looks like, you can you can rough in. Um, now, I want this to be more brown. Now, especially with the character's colors, boop, that purple is not going to be super detracting but it does blend in with, with their hat. So maybe at that point you turn that up and you'd be like, ah, oh, okay, well it blends in with their hat. So let's make it blend in a little less with their hat. Maybe it's their, maybe it's their saloon. Maybe that's why that's the color of the thing. Maybe they were raised in that saloon. And there are ways that you can th uh, send the background to the background. Um, by um shading and i didn't want those colors i want this color thank you thank you um shading shadows that sort of thing
So this is kind of where the like bare minimum that, that you get to is, right? Obviously, you'd have more of an idea of what everything is. Um, oh, I have a different brush out now. Huh, weird. Not what I wanted, but sure. Now we're starting to just kind of get some small delineation. Boop, boop, boop. We know the light source is coming from back here, so that means this whole area is going to be brighter. And again, you have these guides that are just like, oh, this is your... This is your sight line, you know? This is this is your horizon, your vanishing points. All right, so as a quick, so obviously this isn't the most well-sketched saloon. I mean, it's a 30 minute quick sketch of a saloon. But you get the idea. And you get the like, oh, look, there's This is a building with some wood and stuff, but it is well lit because it is on that side of the road. But this is where you can have some fun with some lighting stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm glad it was decent explanations. I'm, I'm happy to help out however. Um, I am always available on Discord. Um, if you want to ping me in the Toad House server, um, I'm pretty sure I'm at Naneepa, um, N-A-N-I, PA, but if you search at Thunderbird Paints or uh, some artist, <laughs> I can always um, plop some information in there, some quick guides. Um, let's see here. Boop, boop, boop. And this gets dark over here, so we'll leave that dark over there. Uh, you want your highest contrast points to be in the front. So we'll add that here. Um, Thunderbird Paints or Heather both work. Perfect. Yes, you will see me under the studio members list. So just send me a message if you have questions on how to do environments. I am usually happy to uh, sit down and actually help talk people through it too. All right, so you got a basic idea, right? This is our basic environment. It's not, it's nothing fancy. They've got some rocks here, that's some rocks. Um, but now what we can do is see this, see this light here? I'm gonna duplicate this copy. I'm gonna drag this up here behind this, behind him. And we are gonna actually go like, use this to create different times of day, right? So now we can do this twilight thing with this, right? Or, um, we can do a similar, like we can have morning, right? So you have twilight, you can have morning, you can do other um, colors on top of that. And out of that, let's, uh, let's go to this right here. No, not paint bucket, gradient. We could even do something like this. Overlay, right? So now you've got this really cool effect here. So create the light. Um, and then you're like, oh, cool. Well, you've got this. I'm gonna duplicate it just so I don't mess it up. And I want to erase this out because this is all shadowed. But maybe there's a window here. Maybe this is a window, so you leave that bright. Oh, leave that. Darken that up, if you'd like to. But you can kind of go through and be like, okay. Now, obviously over here is going to be blue. So what we'd wanna do, if you wanna lighten that up, is you add the yellow in on this side. 
So at that point, you start to actually manipulate the blue and the yellow to get the colors that you want, the light sources that you want. And this becomes a really easy way to do different times of day and give you a really quick shortcut to a like, ah, I just need to make a quick visual novel and I want to have multiple seasons or multiple times of day. Well, how do I do that quickly? Look at how bright that is. And you can even swap these colors and have the blue really act as a shade back here, right? Because this is going to be your shadiest spot. So have this spot right here be shady. Like our friend here. Suddenly, it's just a quick, easy environment. And make, don't forget to make sure to have shadows for your buildings. Shadows for your buildings is a thing a lot of people forget, and it is a huge, huge boon to have shadows for your buildings and for your geography. There we go. Switch that back around, shrink the brush, and suddenly you have like a quick and easy You want to pretend there's a window up here? That's cool. You could do that. Some light coming from in here because maybe somebody's up and working. Some light shining out. Sure. There you go. Get some light shining out. And that went from being just like an abhorrent sketch to that's actually kind of legible as something. Um, it is not important, but um, it is really easy once you start to figure out that like lighting is a huge part of just quickly identifying the shapes and forms of things. Switch those two, have that go all the way up there. There we go. Now, obviously with a little bit more time, you could put a lot more elbow grease into this. You could put a heck of a lot more elbow grease into this and have this be, um, oops, ah, I didn't want to do that. Have this be something that's, that's really, really polished. But if you're creating something quickly, um, and you really want to make it you know, it, you you really want it to have that that classic style um, or that 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 quick style. Um, you can like it, it's it's really really easy to do so. Get your greasy elbows off my art. And it's easy enough to say, okay, I don't want that layer anymore. But I do want, I want it to feel like night. So let's figure out how to make it feel like night. So from here, we're going to actually make this, uh, we're going to hit normal real quick. We're going to grab the two colors that are on here. We're as close to those as we can. We're going to multiply this again. Or, you know, twilight. And you could actually uh, take this and hit shift to have that go perfectly. And suddenly you have like a twilight sort of thing. And you can switch those two colors, eschew, switch those two colors, and 
Now you can start to like shade things a little bit more. You want want all of this area to look nice and dark, you, you can do that. And it's a secondary way to give texture as well. Throw in some, you know, pop this up here, throw in some, uh, do that. Grab a brush that you can do some quick stars or something with. Which I know I have one around here. That's a smudge. I don't want the smudge. Splatter. Here we go. Make the splatter real big. And then what you can do is you can either erase it or just shove this behind the other one. And suddenly stars. Now you, with this, probably want to give a bit of a spoosh, and by spoosh I mean a So it's just an easy way of doing it. Um, shrink this and duplicate, or duplicate and shrink. for a fuller night sky. Then you like to do that once. <laughs> and you could even add another layer to this and darken that. But it's just really, really easy to to manipulate the same screen to have different um there we go uh, the same screen to have different um feels to it all you gotta do is just kind of mess around with it um and be kind to yourself when you're working on it. That's the other thing. Um, because maybe it doesn't come together as quickly as you'd like it to. But make two or three of these for a short game. You got that. You... I'm dropping things. You only need a couple of things. But I did go over time today. Um, I hope you guys liked this. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, I didn't get to UI, so I do apologize for that. But if you guys have any UI questions, please feel free to message me in the, uh, in the Discord. Um, it's a lot of fun to work on these sorts of backgrounds, um, in the environments and whatnot. So, oh, that one's, that one's trippy with the, this dark one. And thank you for the shout out. Um, again, I am here if you ever have any questions. Um, quick backgrounds are kind of my lifeblood. I do basically quick backgrounds and nothing but quick backgrounds. So um, thank you guys for hanging out with Team Toad House today. Thank you again for all of the subs that happened today. That was amazing. I hope this was helpful. Um, I know it was a little more heavy on the character side than on the background side, but Again, always there for questions. Um, we aren't going to be raiding anybody today because I cannot raid. Uh, however, however, um, we will be in the Discord. So uh, I hope you guys are having a great day today. And something that I say on my channel, um, if you aren't having a great day today, I hope you're working towards a better tomorrow. Uh, you are a beautiful human being, and we love you very much. Take care of yourselves, 
and we will see you again soon. Catch you all later. And have a good day, Toads. <laughs>